Hello and welcome back to this I-24 News Evening Edition. I'm Lucy Arish and this is One on One. Joining me tonight is animal liberation activist Gary Urofsky, who has made a name for himself by becoming something of a controversial figure in, animal, uh, in the animal rights arena. Apart from giving lectures, Mr. Urofsky is best known for his approaches in which to get his point across, such as breaking into a far fur fa farm and liberation 1,500 soon-to-be-murdered minks. For reasons such as this, Mr. Urofsky has been arrested numerous of times and has been banned from entering the United uh, Kingdom and Canada. While Mr. Urofsky's means of putting an end to what he calls an animal holocaust, his message has reached millions of people all around the world and has influenced many in changing their perspective of the food industry. Good evening and thank you very much for coming to our studio. Thanks for having me. So, um, I will start. Like we said, you affected millions and millions of people around the world. Why is it so effective here in Israel? How come that it's catching in Israel? I'm not clearly sure why, but the only thing that I can figure out is that over the years, as I've talked to tens of thousands of people, I've noticed that people who have been oppressed, Jews, Hispanics, women, blacks, they always respond better to this revolution that I'm involved in because they understand oppression. They've been through it. They know what it's like to be treated like nothing, like their lives don't matter. So that's what I think is going on here. Jews have been an oppressed people for thousands of years. We understand oppression and we're supposed to not support it. So I'm just pointing this out to everybody because people don't realize how much they're harming animals in their daily lives. So as I point out, the steak, the hamburger, the chicken sandwich that you're eating, the schnitzel, okay, these, these pieces of meat came off the bodies of living animals who didn't want to be murdered, who didn't want to suffer and die, who didn't want to be tormented. So once I point it out to people, most people, sane people, logical people, make that next step to veganism. You know, um, for the last few days or for the last few months, I see a lot of demonstrations in Tel Aviv uh, of people demonstrating against the murder of, uh, and, uh, and slaughtering animals and eating animals. And, uh, but I pass by and I look at their shoes and they have leather shoes. And I say, okay, this is like, let's say, it's, you have two meanings here. It's like you have this, I'm not eating, but I am wearing. Are they aware? Are they, do they know? Oh, it's by moral standards. No, I don't think they're wearing leather shoes. They appear to be leather shoes because you have synthetic leather that looks just like leather, like you have mock meat that looks just like real meat. I think most people falsely accuse animal rights people of having leather shoes, but they're not. And you'd be shoes surprised. Bags, you know. You'd be surprised. New Balance, the, uh, the shoe company. 50% of their shoes are vegan just by default. Even Nike, and I don't support Nike for some human rights issues, but even 50% of Nike shoes are not real leather. So a lot of people are just assuming that uh, vegans and animal rights people are wearing leather shoes. There could be one other issue at play though. Some people, uh, in fact most people, weren't, weren't raised vegan, so they've gone vegan later on in life. So they might have already had leather shoes. Mm -hmm. Well, at that point, the damage has been done. What's the point of throwing them in the trash uh, when the damage is done and you weren't aware of the atrocity that you were taking part in? So maybe people are just wearing them out. And I do advise people to do that. You can either wear out your old animal skin stuff or you can give it away. That's what I did when I went vegan. I just couldn't have animal skin on my body. It made me disgusted. It's amazing that you're saying animal skin and not yeah. leather. Well, that's what it is. See, we like to use euphemisms, which is why these atrocities take place so we always want to say leather when it's cow skin and we want to say uh, even even the terms bacon what, what's bacon you mean pig flesh so once you start thinking about what we're wearing and what we're eating again this is why I say sane people will make a choice towards veganism it makes no sense because if you let's put it this way I like to explain how this is the biggest holocaust that has ever existed and people get upset at those I, terms. I, I have to tell you that I am upset about okay. hearing like holocaust comparing the holocaust to uh, like every single person that that heard your lectures and to hear this holocaust comparing it to animals it's a little bit, well, let me and explain. you know what, and I'm not even Jewish, okay. but it's 
hurt me. It, it well, just let me explain how, on, how, how this, this Holocaust is actually worse. I'm offended that we compare human Holocaust to the animal Holocaust, which is the biggest Holocaust in the history of humankind. If you went to the nearest cow or chicken slaughterhouse and removed the animals and replaced them with Jews, you have now recreated Auschwitz. There's no difference. You have a building that exists to dismantle, to torment, to torture and murder innocent beings. Let's play a time game, war, a time warp game. Let's go back 60, 70 years. You go back to Auschwitz or you go back to Birkenau, you remove the Jews and replace them with cows and chickens. You still have a Holocaust taking place. This, in fact, we learned how to kill Jews in the Holocaust, the Nazis did, because they studied what the meat industry was doing. We've learned how to torture and kill each other because we practiced on the animals first. But animals are eating animals, you know? Some animals. And Hold it. Seventy-five percent of animals on this planet are herbivores. But the, it's, it's part of our circle of life. No, it's the know? circle of it's torture like and death. You, when you see uh, a lion eating a zebra, okay. it's, it's and you're... But I notice you okay, have clothes is, on. And I notice that you have a cell phone and you have a computer. It is unfair to pick one thing that lions do that you want to mimic when you don't want to mimic anything else they do. When lions walk up and greet each other, they sniff each other's ass. When I came in this room, you did not kneel down and sniff my ass. Okay, lions sometimes kill their young when they're runts. Okay, if a human being killed their baby because they didn't want him, we arrest them and charge them with murder. Could you go to a courtroom and say, hey, but your honor, lions kill their babies, can't I? It's but an it's unfair. Their survivor. It's an unfair comparison. You're not a lion, and just so you know, lions are carnivores. Humans are not. We are herbivores, 100% up and down. You put a two-year-old child in a crib with a bunny rabbit and an apple. Let me know when the child eats the bunny rabbit and plays with the apple. We are purely herbivorous. We have no carnivorous or omnivorous instincts whatsoever. And physiologically, if your jaw moves from side to side in a grinding motion and you chew. You're 100% herbivore. If you were a meat eater like a lion, your jaw would only go like this, up and down, rip and swallow. If you sweat through your pores to cool yourself, you're what, herbivore. What is your main purpose? Because most of the world won't be comfy here. It depends on which day you ask me. The world, injustice can't live forever. The world will become vegan one day. Do you just, really like the, just like every woman on this planet will one day have their equality with men. Just like one day, um, all oppression will fall by the wayside. Injustice doesn't live forever. And it seems insurmountable, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm in the trenches, believe me. It looks like and seems like it can't happen. But remember, it took 400 years to convince white people in America not to own black people. You can see why this is taking so long. We can't even treat each other with kindness let alone treat the chickens and the pigs and the turkeys and the insects of the world with kindness. But I think we can treat each other with kindness one day once we learn how to treat the animals with kindness. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable because I just had a, a steak for lunch. And, um, I, I, and it's still I'm not convinced 100% convinced that I should stop eating meat for the rest of my life. It's not that I'm eating meat every day. but I do love my steak on the plate once a week. So you have now two minutes to try to convince me eat meat once in once a month. I don't want to convince you to do it once a month. I want to convince you never to do it. Okay, you have to put yourself in the animal's position. Imagine that you were raped to impregnate yourself. Okay, somebody raped you to impregnate you. You gave birth to this baby. This baby was stolen from you at birth. That baby was fattened up with corn and soy and wheat and oats. That baby was put on a concentration camp truck, sent to a slaughterhouse, hung upside down, fully conscious, in front of all of her own species, screaming, terrified, in fear, knife shoved into you know, her throat, cut up into pieces. Where's the justification for this? And it's not your steak. You said my steak. I'm very big on language. That steak was never yours. Okay? That steak is a euphemism, by the way. That's cow flesh. That flesh belonged to another living being. Where do humans get off owning and controlling living beings? Where do we get off thinking that we're the most special thing that has ever existed on this planet, when in reality, we're the most unspecial thing that has ever existed on this planet? Are you aware that if humans were removed from the planet, 
the extinction of humans would benefit everything that exists? Are you also aware that if the bees died off, as we've been talking about this for about 10 years in the news, the whole system collapses? If the ants were exterminated, the whole system would collapse. This is how important and special ants and bees are to the world. Why do we think we're better than they are when they serve a vital role and we serve no vital role whatsoever? We're tormentors, we're oppressors. Where do you think it's, com it's coming from? The arrogance? Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what has gotten into us. Besides death and torture and murder, I think when you put violence in, you get violence out. You consume discrimination and death, you're going to, you know, exude the because same horrible things. Because some people may say the same things about you. Because wow. some people may say that he's arrogant, he thinks that he knows better, he thinks that he's better than us, and actually we're all, actually, um, we're all, let's say, uh, how can I put it, um, I'm the one to be charged and you are the, the judge who is judging me right now. Yeah, and well there's two people in this world, there's, there's people that judge and people that lie about judging. We judge people every day, we judge child molesters, we judge rapists, we judge Nazis, uh, we judge murderers. Um, and I know this is a shock to the meat, dairy and egg eaters of the world, but vegans are more ethical than they are, hands down. And of course, just like a person that doesn't rape is more ethical than a person who does rape. A person who doesn't kill cows, pigs, chickens, and turkeys is better than a person who does kill and torment cows and pigs. Do you think that a person that uh, is not uh, killing uh, birds and chicken and, uh, and uh, um, cows and pigs and, and eat meat, he cannot rape anybody? He cannot murder? No, there, there are no <laughs> vegan rapists in the prisons of the world. You, you go find me a vegan rapist. I'd love to hear about a story. I'll show you prisons around the world full of meat, dairy, and egg-eating rapists and child molesters and murderers and people that rob and steal. In fact, I'll even take it a step further when we talk about health. Go find me a hospital with a bunch of sick vegans in it. I'll show you hospitals full of people with heart disease, cancers, diabetes, osteoporosis, kidney problems, etc. All stemming from animal protein, the main cause of every major disease on this planet. And in addition to all the fat from all the animal products and cholesterol and the saturated you fat know, and trans. Hitler was a vegetarian. Hitler was not a vegetarian. That's a complete lie. A complete and utter lie from Goebbels, his propaganda minister. Hitler did have a lot of power, didn't he? If he had all this power that he had, why didn't he mandate veganism if he were a vegan or a vegetarian? Do you know that Himmler, the guy that constructed all the gas chambers, I was don't know, a maybe, chicken? Maybe was he a chicken, wanted to slaughter Jews. This was is a why he had another idea, complete okay. other idea. Two of his biographers, Albert Speer and Robert Payne, uh, talked about Hitler's love for liver dumplings and pigeon, which is known as squab. His main chef, Dion Lucas, wrote a book in 1964, the Gourmet School Cooking Book, and she wrote his favorite recipes, which were all meat-based recipes. This is the power of propaganda, the power of Goebbels, still alive and well. Do you know why people think Hitler was veg? Goebbels wanted to make Hitler seem as peaceful as somebody else in the world at that time who was loved and adored, and his name was Mohandas Gandhi, and Gandhi was vegetarian, and Goebbels would say, wait, Hitler's just like Gandhi. He loves animals, too, and he's peaceful to the animals, and he's a vegetarian. He's not, and just so you know, all the concentration camps did have animal slaughterhouses there, too. And when the Allied forces came in to rescue the Jews and the gypsies, they left the animals behind. This is why I talk, call this the world's largest and longest running holocaust. The animal holocaust was happening long before the Jewish holocaust, during the Jewish holocaust, and it's still happening today. Every second, just so you know, of every minute, of every hour, of every day, female animals are raped to impregnate them. Every second, animals are being killed. Every sec 60 billion animals you, every year. Do you accept or do you understand or the people are calling you terrorists? Sure. What else are they going to call me? You couldn't sleep at night if they called me a compassionate human being, because I'm calling them out. And as we go back in time and look at all the other people that we adore now, collectively, we all agree, Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King, and all these people, Rosa Parks and Cesar Chavez, do you know, they were not loved during their time. They were despised. They wanted to make change, massive change. It's only later on that a society looks back at revolutionary activists and says, oh, man, he was great. He was just trying to break, bring peace and justice. I'm trying to bring compassion to this world. It's amazing that I'm called a terrorist. And if I'm called a terrorist for saving animals, what do we call people that kill animals and torture animals and eat animals? 
One last thing before we have 30, 20 seconds. What did you have for lunch? Uh, I had a vegan schnitzel and a vegan burger from the vegan shawarma place in town, my favorite restaurant. Vegan schnitzel, vegan shawarma, <laughs> vegan schnitzel, a vegan hamburger. Uh, Gary, thank you very much for uh, coming to our studio. And thank you, our viewers, for being with us tonight. We, and we will be back on Sunday at the same time at the same place from the Jaffa Port. Have a great night. Thank you.